Good morning, Sunday School. My name is Trustee Edward Chapman. Today, we're going to talk about our Sunday School lesson. The devotional time reads as follows. Let's pray to God, our Father, to God, our study session with his Holy Spirit. Our devotional scripture comes from 1 Corinthians, first verse, 26 to 31. And the scripture reads as follows. Brothers and sisters, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. God chose the lowly things of this world and the despised thing and the things that are not to notify the things that are so that no one may boast before him. It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus who has become for us wisdom from God. That is our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. Therefore, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. Let us pray. Father God, we come this morning humble and submissive. We come, Father, thanking you for our lying down last night and our rising up early this morning, closing our right mind with full use of our limb to see this, your new day, a day that we've never seen before and never will see again. Heavenly Father, I come asking that you bless the sick, blind, crippled, hungry, homeless, jobless, and incarcerated. Those who are in hospitals and nursing homes, come listen to home, rehabilitation centers, those who are affected by the corona 19 virus, and those who are grieving the loss of their loved one. We ask them, Father, that you touch their hearts and their mind, that you let them know that you're God all by yourself, that you still sit high, that you look low, that you're the way, the truth, and the life. And after you, there is none other, and that there is no problem too hard for you to handle. Finally, we, Father, we're asking that you will allow the mercy to flow from the hem of your garment to the crown of each and every one of these individuals' head that are inflicted by all these different diseases, problems, circumstances, and situations, that it may flow down through their body to every cell, to every organ, to every tissue, to the sole of their feet, Releasing healing power, releasing more faith, releasing the peace of mind. Now, Father God, as we prepare to bring on our speaker of the day, we're asking that you touch her, that you will cause her to reduce, or to decrease, that you may increase. Father God, we have today as our speaker... Sister Kim T. Chapman, evangelist Kim T. Chapman, I present to Sam and introduce to others. Oh, yes. I forgot her title. That's why. That's why I called. <laughs> Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. I thank God for another day and thank him for this opportunity just to share the word. I am so grateful to Sister Word Up uh, for giving me this task to bring our lesson. It's another great lesson. Our lesson today is hearing and doing. Hearing and doing. The book of James is a book that talks about faith and wisdom and provides instructions to all of us. Our young people lesson is talk is cheap. I like working with the young people because they break it down and they keep it real. Our objectives for our lesson um, this week 
And our background scripture is found in James 1, 19 through 27. And our objectives one, objective number one, is what is wisdom? And I think um, last week that Sister Hooper went over what wisdom was. Number two, how do we obtain wisdom? How do we become wise? We get wisdom from God, of course. Number three, understand that the proof of wisdom is not merely in what one says, but in what one does, especially in what one does for those who are in need. Something that has been demonstrated and exemplified in what our team that give out the food is doing. So that's putting your faith into action. Show me what you're working with. Number four objective, feel compassion for those who are most vulnerable and desire to act on their behalf. In Mosaic law, they took care of the widows and the poor. And we as Christians today, that is what we're supposed to do. It is better to give than to receive. Objective number five, engage in ministry that demonstrates a religion that is pure and undefiled before God. Those are our objectives for this lesson. Again, our lesson text is taken out of James 1, 19 through 27. All month we've been learning about faith and wisdom. The proof of wisdom is not just in what we say, but what we do. Action speaks louder than words. My mama always say, you better show me better than you can tell me. So I want to just give you a backdrop. Um, again, James is the half-brother of Jesus Christ. And I can just picture um, Jesus telling James that he is the Messiah, somebody that he done played with and played tag with, and he's his brother and all of that jazz. So it wasn't until after the resurrection that James acknowledged who his brother was. Under Roman law, Christians were persecuted. Back in the day, just like those movies we see, Spartacus, the Ten Commandments, it was a lot of brutal fighting. It's been some brutal fighting here lately with the All Blacks Lives Matter, All Lives Matters uh, movement. But James wrote to us, the Christians, to instruct us. He called us Christian brothers and sisters on how we're supposed to live in those type of difficulties. Today, Christians are still being persecuted all over the world. Again, last week, Sister Hooper told us about the faithful rejoicing and suffering and God's rewards to those who suffer. But this week, we're talking about hearing and doing, putting our faith in action. The Apostle James saw himself as a servant of God and of the Lord. And so, just like they had oppressed people that are, uh, back then, they were not necessarily good people and any more than black people who are oppressed today, some of them cannot be seen as good people. So if we are oppressed and we're going through trials, we shouldn't be out there looting and taken if Black Lives Matters, let's remember the cause that Mr. Lewis and Dr. King and all of those people uh, fought for. So let's get into our lesson, which is found in James, again, 1, 19 through 27. We are going to take it from the NIV, New International Version, and we'll make some references to our key King James Version. We'll start with scriptures 19 through 21, which specifically speaks to 
um, our lesson. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. 21, therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you which can save you. So when, 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 when James was speaking to them about the wrath and the hostility, and I think the KJV says that for the wrath of man worketh not to the righteousness of God. If we are angry and if we act hardiness and sarcasm and we're quick with it, it does not produce the righteousness of God. I know me personally, I have a temper and I've had to work on that because we have a flesh side and we have a spiritual side. But when we become the new man, that spiritual side is supposed to overpower that flesh side because if we operate in anger, and don't, don't, don't think that we won't get angry. The word of God said, be angry, but what? Sin not. Okay, so we might get angry, but it does not produce the righteousness of God. Jesus was a humble man. And he, the outline was given to us in Galatians in the fruit of spirit. Uh, Galatians 5, 22, 23. We are supposed to use temperance. And temperance is what? Self-control. So we got to learn how to control our temper. If you talk to Brother Chapman, he might say, I got a temper. I think I'm calm, cool, and collective. Okay, 22. In the scripture reads, do not merely listen to the word. And, if, and so fool yourself or deceive yourselves. Do what it says. So but KJV says, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own self. Don't just listen to it. You got to do it because otherwise you're fooling yourself. If Brother Chapman tells me, which he does, you need to drink that water every day. Get up in the morning like I do and drink a bottle of water. Well, I don't be wanting to drink no water. So I hear it, but am I doing it? And sometimes when you don't do what you hear, the result may be negative. So when I get to the doctor and they say I need more fluid, it's because I heard him say drink water, but I didn't do it. So not just be hearing the word, but be a doer of God's word. 23 through 25 is our next scripture reading. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. Can you imagine uh, that, I, I, I think analysis for that particular three scriptures is that are you just talking the talk or are you walking the walk? If I go and if I forget uh, looking in the mirror, I can look in the mirror and see makeup running all down my face. And two minutes later, I'm going to go back out in the congregation or wherever I am, and I'm going to th be thinking I'm looking good. And I can see uh, Sister Word up looking at me like, do she know that mascara running on her face? So when you look in the mirror, you can't forget what's in the mirror. What is our mirror as Christians? The Word of God. This is your mirror. So when you look in your mirror, you're supposed to be mirroring Jesus. You're supposed to be mirroring what they have told us, the instructions. 
This is your instructions, your road map. So Michael Jackson, I mean, y'all, some of y'all might be so saved that y'all don't know Michael Jackson, but Michael Jackson put it like this. I'm looking at the man in the mirror, and I'm asking him to change his ways. So I'm saying again, when you look in that mirror and it's looking back at you, don't forget what you're looking at. So make sure that your mirror mirrors the mirror of the Word of God. Our next outline is verse 26 and 27. And it reads, Those who consider themselves religious and yet do not keep a tight rein on their tongues deceive themselves. In other words, you fool yourself and their religion is worthless. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and thoughtless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. And what KJV says is pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, that we as Christians should be visiting the fatherless and the widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. So Christians, don't forget that the Bible is a road map. It is a mirror. And so when, when James gets further into the lessons, he's going to talk about that tongue, which is so powerful and how he refers it to a bit later on. And the, the bit controls the horse. And this tongue controls the whole self of us. So I just want to um, do a recap. Six things I need you to remember. One, we could save ourselves much grief if we would listen more and speak less. Sometimes we just need to zip it. Number two, human anger is usually the exact opposite of God's holy anger. So remember, we're flesh, we're spirit. So you have to learn how to anger your, 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 your tongue. Uh, KJV says, bridle your tongue. NIV say, control your tongue. You all know that song, Order My Steps. And Order the Steps is a verse that says, bridle my tongue each and every day. So this is something we have to practice because sometimes if folks say something to you and flesh rise up, you're going to speak and it's not going to be how God would speak it. So we got to be slow, slow to anger. Number three, let the word of God reform your attitude and behavior. That's James 1 and 21. Scripture tells us to be ye transformed by the renewing of our minds. So we should have new minds as Christians. Number four, I want you all to remember that in James 1, 22 through 25, we fool ourselves if we think that simply going to church and learning the truth will make us pleasing to God. God don't need us to put on no show for him. Your worship got to be real and sincere. Those that worship him, we must worship him in spirit and in truth. The unrestrained speech reveals a wicked heart, James 1.26. And James 1.27, the Christian's work is helping the helpless, not merely speaking holy words. Let us not just be hearers of the word, but let us be doers of the word. God bless you, Mount Zion Sunday School. I love you. And now here's our superintendent, Sister Word Up. Good morning. Good morning, Sunday School. 
I want to, I'm so excited. I had the Chapmans. Uh, they accepted the assignment. Brother, brother, Trustee Edward Chapman and Sister Kim Kim, I call her Sister Kimmy, Sister Go Go Girl, but Evangelist Kim Chapman, uh, who is a, as you've seen this morning, she has rightly divided the word. And I just want to give a special thanks to my right hand guy. Uh, my superintendent, Brother Willie Donaldson, you'll hear he's going to close us out. Uh, and our, our, um, our IT person, we have an IT Sunday school, we got an IT, give us, a, let's give a, a Brother Anthony a round of applause. He's trying to take us into to the next level and helping us make the shift. So we are, we are following you, Brother Anthony, and we applaud you because we know it's a lot of work and dedication. But with all that said, guess what time it is, y'all? Y'all know it's quiz time. I love quizzes. And Sister Kim Chapman went through that word. Then she had six points. So we ought to all get these questions right. It's quiz time, y'all. Y'all ready? I just want y'all to put it in the comments. The question number one. Why is it human nature to respond quickly, think slowly, and regret for a lifetime? Now, in, in James 1, 19 through 21, it's just like the opposite, but it's human nature. Sometimes, Sister Kim says she has a temper. Uh, a lot of folks don't know that about me. My boys will tell you. I get with you real quick and straighten you out. So that temper will go off in a minute. But that's not a good thing. And I have been actively listening for the last 12 years. So that's being slow, no, quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to take offense or to wrath or get angry. Okay, so why is it human nature? I don't know. We just knuckleheads sometimes. We just get out of order. But if we are looking in that mirror, like Sister Kemp said, we will be on the right track. Question number two, true or false? True or false? This is a true or false question. James defines self-deceit as hearing God's word but not obeying it. True or false? You can find that right in James 1, 22. Sister Kim had that. That was important. She had that scripture sing it out all by herself. And so in James 1, 22, is that true or false? James defines self-defeat as hearing God's word but not obeying it. That is what? What is it, Sister Kim? Okay. All right. Is that, is that true or is that false? That, is that a tricky question? Y'all look at y'all look in James one twenty two. Somebody, brother Willie, what do, what does James one twenty two say? Be ye a doer of the word mm -hmm. and not hearers only, mm. deceiving your own selves. Wow. All right. Mm hmm. Question number three: Which item is not included in James' definition of pure religion? Which one of these is not included in the religion of, he gave a, a I'm going to have Brother Willie read that to us. Uh, so which item is not included in Jane's definition of pure religion? Looking at the widows and orphans, that's included, isn't it? Yes. Not being polluted by the world, that's included, isn't it? Yes. What about being respected by the congregation? That's not, I don't, I don't think that one's included. Brother Willie, would you read James 1, 27? See, I, 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 that's not included? No. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Brother Willie. Question number four. True or false? Does the perfect law set you free by hearing only? And my, uh, my teacher, Sister Evangelist Kim Chapman, she, she emailed me this. She wanted a couple, a couple more questions added. 
<laughs> for quiz time. True or false, Sister Kim? Does the perfect law set you free by hearing only? No. Yes, no. No. Hearer and a doer. You got to be a hearer and a doer. So question number four is false. The perfect law doesn't set you free just by hearing it only. You got to do it. Our lesson is one of the titles is hearing and doing. And the last question. Who are you fooling or deceiving when you claim to be religious but don't control your tongue? Who are you fooling, Brother Willie? Who are you fooling? We re we're fooling our own selves. Yes. Well, that's quiz time. I, I know you guys were blessed by uh, Trustee Chapman, Sister Kim, Evangelist Kim. Uh, and now we're going to have our... our my superintendent, Brother Willie Donaldson, he's going to close us out with a words of remarks and also words of prayer. Amen. Thank you. Thank you once again. Another good lesson. Yes, yes. Sister Kim did a fantastic job on the lesson. <clears throat> but I was... Um, I was reading the lesson, you know, I was thinking about it. It talks about, it's, it, it's, it's really, it's in the lesson. It's not so much about what you say. Mm -hmm. It's about what you do. It, yeah. it, things has to be, it has to be visible. You know, you can think good or you can say something good, but until you do something good, mm. it, 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 all the rest of that, it don't, it go for nothing. Mm. It's, it's, you have to put it, uh, you got to put legs on it. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And um, just like we talk about, see, during, during this time when Jane was talking, well, the, the, the widows and, and the orphans, mm -hmm. they didn't have anybody. Right, right. Just imagine. They didn't have uh, uh, IBT cards and uh, welfare mm -hmm. cards and, and uh, unemployment, any of this. Mm -hmm. Because if a husband died or whatever and left his wife, she didn't have anything. She didn't have nobody to go to. So it, it, was, it was up to the community and other believers to take care of those people. And an orphan, just imagine a little boy or girl has lost his parents. They don't have anything. So that's why it's so important, you know, the, the widows and orphans. And we have to still uh, look out for the less fortunate in our time. So that's what Jane was saying. You know, in this lesson, even though um, Jane was talking to the Jewish uh, believers. Yes. But just like a, a, in, a, in so much scripture where things are not to us, but it's for us. Mm -hmm. That's the way this lesson was. It wasn't to us, but it's for us. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's practical. Mm -hmm. see, see, James, uh, just like Proverbs, it's a practical lesson. Mm -hmm. It's not anything that you have to wait to get to heaven to do mm -hmm. or anything like that. Mm -hmm. You can just come here doing it right here, right now. You know, that's what he's that's what this lesson is about. So I enjoyed uh, Sister Kim this morning, a great lesson. And our prayer, <clears throat> Lord God, we ask you today to help us be real in our daily walk with you. We know that the pull of the world is strong. However, we thank you that your Holy Spirit gives us all we need to live right lives. We ask this in your son Jesus' name. Amen.